So the first thing I want to say, begin with is why did, did the World Bank team in Latin America last year decide to write a report on these two topics, mobility and the rise of the middle class? And in two slides, I want to convince you that it's because, in fact, we observed a period of substantial social change in Latin America uh, in the first decade of this millennium. Okay? So here, what we've got is a GDP per capita at constant prices from 95 to 2010. And then the incidence of poverty by two poverty lines. So this is just P0, the incidence of poverty, with respect to an extreme poverty line of two and a half dollars a day uh, in Latin America, and then uh, four dollars a day, uh, uh, all of these in purchasing power parities, for the region as a whole. And what you can see is that, you know, there was a little bit of growth in the late 90s. I mean, if you looked at this in the 80s, it would be actually going down a little bit. In the 90s, there was a little bit of growth, very slow. Then in 2003, this picks up quite considerably. There's the global recession, which uh, is the topic of the forum this year. But as you'll see in this presentation, you'll see evidence of one region where actually things were going very well despite the crisis. And the crisis was really nothing more than a blip. Uh, for the purposes of today's uh, presentation. But, you know, and here's the decline in poverty. This is a decline in poverty from 45%, this is moderate poverty, to 30%. So that's a third of all the people who are poor by that income definition in Latin America, you know, leaving poverty. Or to be more precise, a decline of a third in the number of people in poverty, which is substantial. Of course, that reflects growth, the fact that, that these economies were growing faster than before. It also reflects, though, something much more unusual and sort of unprecedented, at least so far as we've had data to measure it, which is a decline in inequality in Latin America. You know, in a, Latin America as a whole is a very unequal continent. By some averages, it's the most unequal continent. And uh, a number of us have been studying the question of inequality in Latin America for a long time. And up until the early 2000s, we used to say it was incredibly difficult to change it. And it was a, a, a very constant fact of life that we were that unequal. Now, of course, we remain very unequal, but it's now really virtually impossible to deny that something quite real happened to income inequality in Latin America in this period. These are uh, 15 countries that we have data for at the beginning and at the end of the period. Uh, inequality rose in three of them. It fell in 12, okay, so on average, it fell by almost four Gini points. And for the countries that fell the most here, Argentina, Ecuador, Mexico, and Peru, you know, six points of the Gini or more, which for anybody who's worked with the Gini coefficient, the Gini coefficient is a very sluggish uh, construct. It moves very slowly. These are substantial declines. Okay? So the fact that they're both broad-based and fairly substantial suggests that something was going on uh, in, in Latin America at this period. Now, there, there are other works uh, that, that deal with what's behind that, and that's not my, my topic today. My topic today is, is to say, if you put together an acceleration of growth, this change in distribution resulting in that decline in poverty, you've got something going on in a region. Okay? A third of the people uh, that were poor, not being poor anymore, uh, uh, is substantial and raises a number of questions. And so, so these are some of the questions that we thought would be important to try and shed some light on when we started. You know, so there's two thirds as many people poor at the end as there were at the beginning, but who are they? Are, you know, who are the ones who left poverty and who are the ones who stayed behind? That wasn't a random process. Some, some people managed to leave poverty, others didn't. Um, so why and wh which ones are are they? Uh, the people who left poverty, what happened to them? Are they all now middle class? There is a lot of talk about the middle class in Latin America at the moment, particularly in the country where Flavio and I are from. The government talks a lot about the growth of the middle class. So is everybody joined the middle class who left poverty? Obviously, that depends on the definition. If not, who did? Who's in the middle class and who isn't? Um, obviously, this, this evidence of people leaving poverty and, and, and moving up in the, in the distribution in some sense can be, can be interpreted as mobility. And we'll talk about what we mean by mobility in a moment. But often when we think about mobility, we also think about mobility between generations, between parents and children. And so we wanted to ask that question as well. Is there as much mobility between generations as there now seems to be within generations? 
Uh, and this middle class that's growing, um, what does it look like? What does it act like? And what are the implications of this increase in the Latin American middle class, possibly for the, for the social contract, to use a, a grand term, or for the way in which policy gets made in the region? So those, those were the, the questions that, that motivated us, given that background of this growth, decline in poverty, and decline in, in inequality.